Hello everyone, my name is Manolo Spinaralakis, the founder and creator of Reality Crowd TV, and welcome to our 13th episode of Reality Crowd TV Crowdfunding Hangouts. We have a great show for you today, but before I introduce our guests, I'd like to just go over a few housekeeping notes. Uh, the Q&A is live, so anyone who may have a question uh, can certainly post their questions live on the question and answer module, and we would be happy to answer those questions at the appropriate time. Uh, we will also be posting links to the presentation, uh, ways that you can connect with our panelists after the fact. So if you are going to have any questions related to how do I actually join or see the material that is presented, that will be posted in the event page as soon as we're finished. So let's get to our show. We have two excellent panelists. Uh, we have Albin Baramovich and Elena Baktina. And they are both the founder and co-founder of Fundcaster. And today they are actually going to present us with their program, uh, Crowdfunding Campaign Engineering. And so let's begin first. Uh, ladies first, Elena, can you please introduce yourself and tell, uh, tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Thank you, Manor. It's my pleasure to be invited to your show. So my name is Elena Baktina. I'm a co-founder, as Manor has mentioned, at Fundcaster. My background is in applied mathematics, and then I went into business, graduated from MBA at Georgia Tech, uh, and went into an analytics business, managing uh, business development and Abitech software, which is a big data provider. Then I met Albin at Startup Weekend, and uh, we talked a lot about crowdfunding and actually realized that marrying big data and crowdfunding has a lot of opportunities. So that's how we decided to um, found the Funcaster, and that's why I have a pleasure to be here tonight. Excellent, and uh, you know the, the pleasure is all ours as well, uh, Elena. We've uh, we've met on a number of occasions uh, in Atlanta, and we've spoken before on, on a number of occasions. And uh, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, so then our next guest is Albin, and Albin, uh, Albin and I also have met in person in Atlanta, a great friend of mine, and he's, he's been on a few of our hangouts as one of the panelists uh, to actually help uh, hopeful crowdfunders learn how to crowdfund. And so Albin, thank you for joining us again, and uh, please again, for those who may not know, uh, just introduce yourself and, uh, and your background. Hi, so my name is Albin, as you said, I'm, I'm the mean one. Uh, <laughs> I try not to be, but I, I guess that's the... That's the word in the street. So uh, my background is really in, in technology, uh, IT. Um, I got into crowdfunding April of last year. I was working on a project myself uh, that kind of had a hard time financing. And, and uh, a friend of mine approached me and told me about, about crowdfunding. And I was actually really fascinated, right? And um, kind of in light of everything that has happened uh, in, in uh, 2008, 2009, 10, with, with issues we were facing in the economy, crowdfunding hit me as, as a real solution for entrepreneurs, right? So you no longer have to depend on banks, you no longer have to depend on, on VCs and angels. If you can really create something that others perceive as valuable, there's a brand new venue for you to, for you to use and, and actually make your dreams happen. Right, so um, that's really kind of how I fell in love with it, and and I'll, we spoke about this once before. I, I tend to go on these research fits, so uh, I did spend about two three days looking at all of the all of the crowdfunding platforms out there and kind of uh, you know trying to figure out what's going on, who's doing what, why, what's working, what's not working, and uh, one thing that really jumped at me is that success rate was extremely low on all of them. Um, there were there were obviously differences between between uh, different different platforms, but the success rate was something that was kind of same across. And uh, really, kind of w w what hit me and what got me interested in, in trying to figure out the success rate was the fact that I did find campaigners who were able to launch multiple successful campaigns. So what that told me was, you know, this really has nothing to do with luck. This does have to do with preparation and method people are using. So uh, that's kind of been my, my crusade uh, for last for last uh, two years. Um, 
here in Atlanta, I started a crowdfunding meetup. Uh, at this point, we have over 100, 100 participants, and we're constantly getting new people who are coming to prepare their pitch to, you know, to, to kind of polish up their campaign before the, before they launch it. So it, it's really been a blast. I mean, just just working with people who are so passionate about making their ideas happen and being one of those being one of those crazy people who, who loves to chase the dream, who loves to make things happen and, and kind of see them flourish, it, it's just it's kind of a dream come true. Excellent. No, I, uh, I, I, we definitely can. I, I definitely can feel that passion coming through, Alvin. And then when, when I saw the crowdfunding Atlanta event you held, I also saw that you really do care uh, about the success of, of the people that that come to you. And uh, and so, um, but before we talk about your program, I, I'd like to know a little bit more about how the two of you met. So, Elena, how did how did you meet Alvin, and how did you get involved in uh, in Funcaster? Yeah, sure, yes. And, you know, just to share with uh, your audience, my personal challenge and my personal goal today is, is to speak at least as much as Alvin. So, <laughs> Excellent. next five hours is mine. About that. Okay. <laughs> challenge accepted, right, Alvin? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, first of all, we both live in Atlanta. It naturally helps to meet each other. Second, uh, uh, as Alvin mentioned, his background is in IT as well as mine, so big data is uh, what I've been doing. Uh, so I, I network with many technology people uh, here, and one time I just decided to go to a startup weekend. So hopefully many of your viewers have heard about this. Alvin was organizing that particular event here in Atlanta. Um, and and that's that's kind of I I got interested in entrepreneurship basically watching startup weekend atmosphere and environment I you know because of my background in business and corporate so to speak uh, environment I found entrepreneurship pretty inspiring and that's why kind of I was open to to talk more and and Excellent. Alvin and Dias I mentioned we just started talking about crowdfunding how could how could we proceed that that, that was that that moment when I decided yes I want to know more about crowdfunding I sold her excellent of course of course you did you you could sell ice to an Eskimo Alvin <laughs> you think so <laughs> I do I don't I really know do. I don't know I think I need to get a little better there <laughs> Apparently, Alvin has another story. Okay, Alvin. We, yeah, Alvin, how did, how did you know? No, actually, so, so I, I will uh, make a slight correction, uh, Elena. We did meet at Startup Weekend, but we really started working together during Startup Weekend Next, right? So that, that's actually it's, it's a customer discovery product market fit, product market fit program, uh, which I organized for Atlanta as well, um, which is really kind of the basis of of the program that that we're that we're teaching and and uh, on crowdfunding, right? Um, I think there's a huge parallel um, between starting a company and and launching a campaign. They're both kind of launching a product, right? And I was actually very lucky to to come across uh, customer discovery and and lean methodology in my journey. Uh, of trying to trying to uh, build this company, uh, and it just seemed almost too too natural to marry the two concepts. Absolutely, right? and uh, and in fact, I think I see your board in the background of your uh, of your office. You have your your methodology over there. <laughs> you you you. I don't know. I, I think you want to simplify, and you really want to kind of keep yourself accountable. That that's the whole thing with with uh, entrepreneurs, and that's something I talk about a lot. We do have a strong reality distortion field, right? You, you have the tendency to, to see the opportunity and you can see how it can all fit together and you can see how it can, you know, make world a better place. But the truth is, you know, to, to make that dream a reality, you have to start the bridge in reality and take it to the dream, right? You, you can't, you have to do constant, constant reality checking is, are my assumptions correct, right? Uh, is this really what's going on? And I know where I want it to be, and if I'm really dedicated to my dream, 
I'm going to find a way to get it where I want it to be. Yes. Right? But figuring out what are all of the all of the potential issues along the way and being being intellectually honest with yourself only really helps you get there faster. So, you know, that whole thing of of uh, of fail fast, I, I was mentioning that today. I think a, a more a more constructive way to say that is fail fail often, fail fast, but fail small. And if you have a methodology, if you have if you stick to, to kind of a scientific approach, uh, if you have a strong methodology, that allows you to not get too far before you fail. You have these small controlled tests where failure failure doesn't really affect you, it just helps you get further. Because Absolutely. you know, okay, that piece is not gonna work. What else can we do there to build that, you know, to build that uh, scaffolding to get where I want to go. Uh, absolutely, Abin. And um, and you know, I for the audience, um, we're about to go into the portion of the show where we talk about the crowdfunding campaign. But for those of you who've been on, I, I hope you're getting getting the the level of discussion we we have here is that we're talking about entrepreneurship. Even though this is a this is a crowdfunding program, the basis of everything that anyone does when they're about to engage in a crowdfunding campaign should be rooted in entrepreneurship. Even if you're an artist, a film person, you really got to treat it as a methodology, as a business, and as a practice. So I wanted to get everyone to really see that their program is really rooted in business and entrepreneurship, and that's what they're passionate about. So Albin and Elena, thank you for sharing those, those two elements with us. Uh, we do have a question before we go on to your program. The question is, uh, from Frank and uh, Frank, thank you for the question. It says, "When you started the crowdfunding meetup in Atlanta, where and how did you advertise and promote it? Do you charge for attendance, and how often do you meet?" We meet once a month. No, I don't charge for attendance. That uh, so what I did earlier on, as I was doing my research, uh, as I was doing customer discovery, it was. So, so let me actually take it one step further to answer that question. At the very beginning, when I started doing customer discovery, I couldn't find 20 people in Atlanta to save my life who have already crowdfunded, right? So I had to get, had to start very, uh, very quickly, kind of resorting to to uh, Skype to reaching out people nationally. And I guess a word came out that I was that's what I was doing. And then I started uh, getting lots of entrepreneurs who would come up to me and just had lots of questions and. Uh, wanted advice, so it became so bad that I kind of just started doing free office hours in Atlanta on Fridays, but then even that got so overwhelming to the point where, you know, I just basically set up a meetup for people to come in and share everything they know. Uh, also, it was it's still early on, but, but even then, I was saying, you know, this is everything I know. I'm not saying that all of this is correct. I'm just sharing with you all my research. So I wanted to I wanted to kind of create a venue for people to come and share knowledge, right? I also always encourage, even if you've run a, a unsuccessful campaign, please come and tell us what didn't work, right? So um, I just again I wanted to have a forum that that would that would foster collaboration. We do have another another one or two meetups here in Atlanta, but. Uh, not to put them down, but they're really not for crowd funders. That's all about the politics. It's it's all about I don't know what, but crowd funders don't get any help there, basically, right? And I was really interested in okay, how do we make this? How do we help these people be successful? So um, all I did is I posted I posted it on the first on the you know I created a meetup on the first meetup we had maybe three four people, then the word got out and we had ten, then we had. 20, 30, and now, and now we're up to 100. Wonderful. Great. Thank you for that, Albin. A very thorough explanation. And, uh, and Frank, uh, thank you for the question. Um, and and just, so, just so you guys know, if, if you're wondering how to learn more about meetups, wherever you live in the nation, simply go to meetup.com and type in crowdfunding, and that would be a great way to really just get connected with a bunch of like-minded people who are really looking to do uh, crowdfunding as well. It could be a great resource for you. Uh, so now let's go to um, let's go to the actual uh, program syllabus first. We do have another question from Brian Brisky, and Brian, thank you for that. But we're going to hold off until we hear the overall uh, syllabus first because I think they might answer your question 
uh, as they go on with their presentation. So, uh, Albin, would you like to share your screen so that we could see uh, what crowdfunding campaign engineering is, and uh, and we can kind of just see what the actual syllabus for your program is, and then we can kind of you know work on a few questions from there. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Do you have the screen share methodology? Um. We have the technology. We can make it work. However, yeah. um, however, uh, I've been talking for a while. I know Elena wants to get oh. the same amount of yes. uh, airtime, so I'm going to defer <laughs> her uh, to her to, to kind of walk walk us through the. Uh, and I'll just jump in, and you know. Sure. Okay. Yeah, Elena. I, I apologize. I, I forgot about this competition. <laughs> So, uh, okay, so if you go to the left of your screen, uh, if you go to the left of the screen, you have a green box that says screen share. Mm -hmm. Just give me a second, please. Perfect. Um, so, uh, in the okay. meantime, in, you can in the ask asking, uh, You can ask Albin another tough question. Too. Sure. So, <laughs> so Albin. I'm busy. So Albin. Um, I was going to ask you, uh, the last time I was there, you were cooking some delicious food. Have you cooked anything delicious ever since? <laughs> I think I've cooked a lunch for Elena uh, <laughs> Monday. Where was it again? Wasn't it? <laughs> was it lunch? Was it uh, I think it was lunch. We were working over at my place, yeah. Excellent. Well, I, you know what? I really don't get nearly as much time to cook anymore, and I, and I do enjoy it, but... but uh, I'm kind of glued to this place where I'm out, out and about meeting people. So, sure. Yeah. Sounds perfect. And um, and um, and so also, Albin, uh, I know in the past you've you've been helping people uh, with using this methodology, and now this program that you're about to share with us, you've you've actually, you know, put it in a structure now. But essentially, you're going to share with us the methodology that you've created. And Elena has created um, that you've actually used on other people. Is that correct? Correct. Excellent. Yes. Perfect. Um, and and um, perfect. All right. So Elena, it looks like you could. Sh uh, we see your screen. Uh, now you just have to pull up the actual Eventbrite link. So you can you can see Alvin, right? Alvin, say hello. Yes, we can see Alvin still. All right, guys. So. This is a, um, our page, right, to the class. Everybody's welcome to visit and to visit it and read more well, in more depth, more details. And we will, I believe, Manolis, correct me if I'm wrong. We will post the link to this web page um, later or after, right? Yes, we'll we'll post it on the uh, on the event page after, so that if anyone is interested in uh, in attending, uh, they can go to the Eventbrite link. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So you can read a short description. Actually, today after we had the webinar in the morning, we posted a record recordings from the webinar uh, where we share some, you know, slides and uh, basically go um, over the course. But if you go all the way down, you'll see syllabus. And here we go. So, so let me give you let me give you another free tip. Um, don't use join me if you want to do a webinar. <laughs> Yes, today okay. it was a little bit uh, distracting, but I, okay, Albin, we are not here to help or not help. Join me, let them. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was, it, it's not. It's not help. Okay, so so here here's the intellectual honesty again. I don't think they were made for for webinars because it, the functionality just doesn't support that. It's not good or bad. It's just it's to be recognized and dealt with, right? Right. Okay, anyway, so as you can see, Alvin is not happy, but <laughs> to go with our handout, um, let me show you. So, our class, the way we see it, is a four-week class. Every week we, have, we plan to have two sessions, about two hours. In session one, we will cover some crowdfunding basics. What crowdfunding is, four major pillars, and Alvin loves to talk about this. He has all cool animations of pillars. Uh, we will also go through uh, whether you are a good candidate, like what kind of people and what kind of projects are good candidates to be 
crowdfunding because it's not a secret that not every company, not every product, not every project is is a good fit. Well, and not, not just that. I, I want to add, you know, people have to be aware uh, there are four types of crowdfunding. And depending on what type of offering you have, as well as how far along you are in your company, uh, you might consider different types of crowdfunding. So this class is about rewards and donations. Uh, so f for those, we want to make sure that if you're taking this class, like you really, those are the, the best options for you considering uh, all of those. I great, great, and, and just just to make sure everyone's on the same page, um, so so a rewards campaign is 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 on a platform such as Kickstarter.com or Indiegogo or GoFundMe. Those those are the rewards, and then a, a donation campaign could be on um, donors choose, uh, you caring sites like that, where it's it's not really offering a reward. It's a, it's a straight donation. Um, right. And you can actually do it on, on uh, Rocket Club. You can do it on Indiegogo as well, donation, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Thank you, gentlemen. Yep. We will also, in session one, we'll be talking about campaign life cycles, pre launch, launch, and, and post launch. So I'll, I'll keep yeah. on interrupting Elena. I'll let her, yeah. let her read, but That's I'll, I'll keep on interrupting her. That was my plan. Yes. <laughs> so. So uh, here talking about the life cycles, this is really where, where launching a product, launching a crowdfunding campaign ties back into launching a product, right? The, how you go about this is not new. The, the tools have changed, right? Now we use, now we use Kickstarter to do it. We, we use Facebook to do it. We use these new, new cool, fancy tools. Uh, but what has to be achieved is basically the same as it was five, ten years ago. Actually, we have the added benefit now that all these cool tools uh, usually come with some pretty cool metrics that we can use to, to better understand our, our progress and our success. Excellent. Elena? Yes, cool. In session two, we will, um, we will come to the first phase of campaign life cycle, which is pre-launch. Um, and we will actually devote three sessions to this particular phase, because whether you realize it or not, 90% of work that will lead later to a success in your crowdfunding campaign needs to be done before your launch day. And there we will share with you some readings, some, uh, we have great tools. Albin have, uh, has initially, you know, come with ideas and um, how to help you guys analyze your campaign and uh, help you compare your campaign with other successful campaigns, historical ones, to give you some benchmarking on where you should be to achieve your financial goal. So we'll be sharing with you tools uh, on crowdfunding engineering, crowdfunding modeling. Then we will come to a very cool session on channel discovery, how to use Twitter, Facebook, Google+, uh, whatever other social media channels you personally use, how to utilize and leverage the strengths of every particular channel to promote your campaign, to engage your audience prior to launch. So I want to give a disclaimer here. I can talk about this for a very long time, and I will raise my hand and say that I've done a very poor job of actually applying most of those methods to growing my social media. I've just kind of started doing that, right? Um, but truly, there is there is lots of science behind that, and and I think that the more you you basically let's put it this way: if you want to run crowdfunding campaign, you have to know about that. There's no ifs and buts around it. Right. You you do, and and I will tell you be, because we personally are in this full full time as you are. A, a large part of our business naturally is getting the word out about these hangouts. So we we had to go through a process to really learn uh, social media as well, and and we've we've connected with some very bright individuals, as you know, Alvin. Right. Um. Who really you know who really can help a, a campaigner succeed in in that portion of their growth. Um. And and that's a great point, Manolis. I want to bring that up. Um, you're you're working with, with somebody who's very competent, right? 
Uh, but I do want to warn people that there are lots of scammers out there when it comes to social media. Experts, right? I think one of the best ways to to uh, see you know what's going on is is to really kind of follow them for a little while and and see see how they do it uh, before you decide to really engage and, and have them help you. Absolutely, absolutely on that. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry, Lena. Uh, go ahead. No, that's fine. Great discussion. So on our next session, session two, during week two, we will continue and finish, no, actually continue pre-launch phase. And uh, this is, a, you know, my personal maybe topic is campaign assets, value proposition, campaign page, all of this video and rewards. Uh, because I have a marketing background, we put a little bit of marketing science in it. And I've been did a great job applying marketing to crowdfunding. So uh, let me add a little more to that. This is really kind of the core that you will see in most other classes, right? How to how to um, kind of spruce up your campaign page, how to do your video, how to do rewards. And uh, again, this is something I'm going to find in most other classes. I think this is almost common knowledge at this point. I think the most value you're going to get out of this section is not just how to do it, but how to work with your network and how to engage your network to really optimize what you think is good, right? Uh, I am yet to work with a campaign uh, which has done a good job putting their awards together initially, right? Um, I don't know if you remember some of our conversations, Manolas, but it's inherently something that people value what they're providing way more than than somebody without those emotional attachments do uh, do right. Yes. So so involving your network and 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 um, methods to to kind of use it to get to identify those early enthusiasts and and uh, later your ambassadors is is absolutely crucial and something. I keep on saying is the more successful you are at crowdsourcing your campaign, the more successful you are going to be at crowdfunding, right? So I think that that's the most value you're going to get out of that out of that section. Absolutely, and um and actually, Elena, but before we move forward uh, on that session, we do have a couple of questions, um, and and so uh, they're very good questions. And I think we did pass the crowdfunding statistics section, which is a little bit higher up, so we'll ask this question now. Um, this question is from Brian Brisky, and Brian, thank you, uh, you know, pleasure to have you watching us. Thank you for joining. And uh, Elena, let's talk numbers. Are you using predictive statistics to answer what happens on the platform or on the engagement channels, i.e. Twitter, Facebook, etc.? Well, the plan is... Um no, no. Yes, so we've identified key performance metrics, so to speak, key parameters that at least correlate with the success of the total company. And what and that's what we will be talking throughout the course. If we talk about if, if the question is more about the secret formula, then of course we have it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not um, it's not in the scope of this course for us to share it at this point. Yes, when we come to talks about Funcaster, about our prediction engine, of course it will be there a lot of data analytics and secret formulas going on to help future campaigners and estimate their chances of success prior to launch based on historical data of successful and not successful campaigns. And, uh, Parameters we've identified as critical to predict the, to predict the success. Yes. Excellent. And, and Alvin, did, so, did did you want to add anything to that? I was just going to say uh, here in the course we're really just trying to stick with, you know, we love statistics, we love numbers. Uh, yesterday we're sitting around thinking, well, what if we slice it this way versus that way? What would that? So, but I realize that most people just want to know. How does this apply to me? So we've really kind of tried to cut this down to here are the things you really have to know, right? Here are the things you really have to be aware of as you're as you're moving forward. So we're just we're really trying to kind of really try to keep it just to 
you know, what's pertinent to you as you're moving to, uh, forward through your journey. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And, you know, yes, let me add actually, because I think Brian's question is about maybe what we're going to share uh, here at this particular portion of the class. And um, here we will be talking about crowdfunding statistics uh, in the industry. We will share with you numbers of, say, success per category, technology versus dance versus uh, uh, publishing, right? We'll share with you statistics on what's the level of um, reward, of the na donation reward level, which is most popular among backers, and, and so, so on. So this is... So let me cut in a little again. I was saying what's pertinent to you. And the reason why we're sharing this is, you know, we've had some of these, some of the, uh, some of the issues we're trying to prevent, even on uh, Reality Crowdfund TV. I forget who we're talking to, but uh, we're talking to a guy who spent two, three hours getting prepared. He asked for double the amount of what average, ever, uh, you know, what people are asking for that type of campaign. So I think it's very important to know kind of like, okay, this is what I'm trying to do. Um, so if I look at other things that we're trying to do something similar, how do I compare, right? So if I'm trying to do dance, which is actually one of the most successful categories, and I'm asking for 300,000, um, I will find out that the average dance campaign is actually 3,000, right? So, so it's kind of just understanding, okay, so here's what the real uh, landscape is like, and this is how I fit. And I'm not saying that the average is 60,000, for example, for, for technology, that you can't ask for 250, but you have to understand that what type of additional work that, that entails. Yes. Right? So, so it's really, that, that's kind of the, the point of that, of that section, is just to kind of, here, here's, here are the averages, right? And um, again, going back to reality check, you know, we're all better than average. I mean, 70, 75% of, of people are better than average drivers, right? As guys, you know, how are they uh, in the sack, right? So, there, yeah, I know, you're laughing at me. I know this is a funny example, but we're all above average. But ask women, and you'll see that that's so far away from truth. Uh, I'm just saying, I know. I'm just saying we're we're inherently incapable kind of of, of uh, realizing our short shortcomings, right? So having that mirror, having that that connection to reality check, I think it's extremely important. The best way to do it is to look at what's out there already. Absolutely, Alvin. Absolutely. Um, let's let's keep this rated G, by the way. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just thought that would really kind of hit the hit the. <laughs> Make the point I was trying to make. Oh, uh, of course. <laughs> so, and then one one more thing, Elena, too, because this uh, it was it was in relation to a comment that Alvin made. Uh, this is another question uh, from Brian Brisky. What work do you intend to do in collaboration with campaign managers? Parentheses, not the scam crowdfunding experts. <laughs> So Alvin, that was Is your this, comment. Is this from me or uh, the, 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 that's for you? Unless Elena would like to like to chime in. No, no. So the work that we intend to do, I mean, we're really creating these tools to to support to support uh, campaign managers. If you're talking about the course, or are we talking about the course or the tool? So so let's be let's be more clear, I guess. So, so um, I I believe I believe you could answer it in both ways. So I, so in, in my interpretation is. Um, with your knowledge of the process uh, that crowdfunding entails, uh, how will you work with uh, individuals that are campaign managers, meaning their business is to essentially be a project manager for crowdfunding? So let me tell you this. Uh, for the last two years, I've been receiving calls and, and uh, helping people. Uh, this is something, and Elena contested that, uh, I'm actually very happy talking about crowdfunding, right? It it, uh, it puts me in a good mood. So, and you know this, you were here, right? So, so uh, I love collaborating with anybody who's trying to figure this out. I still, I think it's still early on. Uh, I think things are still changing, and I think even with this course and even with our tool and and uh, with new things coming online, dynamics are going to be changing, right? So. Uh, 
any questions, a anything, anything I can do to help, uh, I'm always happy to do. Right. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's that's good. Uh, so Elena, uh, we we keep interrupting you. You know, the, this is a yeah. syllabus, and and we should have been done with it. And I'm sorry that. I'm sorry that I we have. Noticed, I noticed that <laughs> I'm being interrupted. It was a trap. Yes. And, 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 and you know, and you know, Elena, you, you also have to contend with me, who is a uh, who is a loud mouth as well. <laughs> and you know, just now I realized what the secret purpose of Albin doing this was, because he wanted to be on screens, and I have to stare in the syllabus. <laughs> <laughs> So it was Absolutely. not a good marketing um, move of Anoris. So it, it, it was better to keep me <laughs> on screens and let Alvin talk. Absolutely. But anyway, so at this point, when we come to week three, everybody, the idea of the course is to give you all tools and um, methodology and encouragement, if you will, to work with your audience to find ambassadors, to find influencers in your particular industry, to connect with them, establish relationship, and kind of warm you, warm your audience, your network, uh, to start acting on your lunch day. And that was social media blitz is about. So at this point, you've already worked um, through all your channels. Your audience is ready, and you just pull the trigger. And we have this, of course, very useful checklist for you before you go live with your campaign. You should check all important things on this list. With this, after we've done with pre-lunch, we will move in the lunch phase of your campaign uh, project, campaign life, if you will. And this, if you, Alvin, if you want to talk about any particular um, topics here, I'll just interrupt feel, you when yes, you're there. Yes, feel free. Absolutely. My favorite is lunch event. <laughs> did, 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 did you say did, did you say lunch event? Because I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it's dinner time. That's right. So, well, I guess let me let me pick it up. So, so. Uh, Week three, we are going to be talking about the launch event, right? Like, what's there's a certain order of things in which in which you have to do things, if that makes sense. Um, there is, you have to orchestrate it the right way. Um, so we're gonna go we're gonna go in depth on, on kind of what that is and how you should go about that, obviously. But another another big thing. Uh, is really campaign gamification. We, we talked about engaging your network, engaging ambassadors, but being able to kind of track their progress and come up with incentives for, you know, incentives and, a, and really a fun way for them to track their impact, I think is extremely important. Uh, and you also want to be able to reward some of their efforts, right? So coming up with the right structure and, and uh, not an insulting structure, if that makes sense, because you can also make it kind of insulting. Uh, put a put a price on their help that that doesn't really reflect how much you how much you uh, appreciate their help, if you will. Uh, so so uh, ambassador engagement in general, kind of how to how to coordinate things with with people who are helping you the most, uh, and then uh, how to use social media. Uh, and video updates and and uh, milestones milestones and countdown to really because you can make you can make those very important events during your campaign. You can use them as tools to drive more traffic and to keep and and uh, to get keep and keep people excited about what you're doing, right? But you again, you kind of have to do it the right way. You can't over communicate, but you can be. You can get, uh, I don't want to say boring, but you can get uh, spammy if you don't do this correctly. I'm not sure if that's a word, but I think you, you understand what I'm trying to say. So, so we just want to talk about those, uh, those points so that you don't get spammy, right? Again, I'm sure you get it. So uh, then we're kind of going uh, going to, to talking about traffic ramp in general, just as far as traffic ramp optimization, 
uh, we're really here again we're talking about analytics right so how are you going to keep track of all of these things um, what you sh what should you be paying attention to and how are you going to use all that data and all that intelligence to your advantage as you're as you're running your campaign so I like to say and this is almost you know contradictory terms but you you kind of want to do a intelligent shotgun approach in the beginning right you, you sh you're still gonna have some data you're still gonna have some insights that you collected during the, the pre-launch phase as you start engaging your network as you as you segment your network and as you run these small engagement tests with them but um, during the campaign it's a real showtime right so so although stuff in the pre-launch should be very indicative of how things are gonna go down now you have real data that you're working with and you really want to concentrate your efforts on channels that convert the best so th that's gonna those are gonna be the main the main uh, the main topics um, troubleshooting well hopefully you won't need to do much troubleshooting um, however it is part of every campaign right the, the only the only difference is I think if you don't do your pre-work you're gonna start troubleshooting from day one and you're not gonna end until the last day and there's still a good chance you're not gonna you're not gonna hit it uh, however if you kind of make a plan and it's really not just a plan but it's it's a it's a model that you've built through testing um, you're gonna have to make very small adjustments and and, and you're gonna you know th they're gonna be how should I say? How should I put this up? You're going to see signs when something needs to change. Do you see what I'm saying? And it's going to be very clear. Okay, so we've hit this. Now it's time to do this and this. So again, being aware of some of those some of those signs and what are the best ways to adapt at that point is is going to be very important. Wonderful. So, um, Wonderful. And I I kind of admit um, I am personally the weakest in after the campaign. And I've recruited some people to to uh, do some guest lectures, but what we're gonna be what we're gonna be talking about here is really the end of your campaign is kind of start start of your entrepreneurship journey, if you will, right? Um, hopefully, because I, I'm hoping that you didn't just do kind of once once thing and now you you for, forgot about all of your backers we want to talk to you about what are the next steps right how are you gonna deliver on your promises so, so now you have the money what now right how are you gonna deliver that how are you gonna keep your people engaged and, and what are some of the options that kinda of open themselves to you as somebody who's run a successful campaign right so that's I think that that pretty much wraps it up from from uh, that's another thing I, I also mentioned every every week for most of the sessions we are gonna have uh, guest speakers uh, some of them have either run multiple campaigns uh, or assisted on on another some of them are celebrities uh, pretty engaging and fun fun guys um, and also again we're also gonna be keeping office hours uh, every week wonderful Albert. which is uh, which is also why we're putting a limit by the way on only 20 on only 20 uh, only 20 students, right? Yep, Elena, are sure. you doing this? Are yeah, you doing actually, this and Elena, if, if you wanted to close this, you yes. have to go to your left and click on the green button again, and it'll automatically close up. Yeah, I, I want to be with you guys. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> now we see your face. Now, 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 the, now this room just got a whole lot more beautiful. Right, I know. Thank you. Um, <laughs> moment, I feel robbed of my own ear time. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and well, actually, you know what? To make up for Elena, we do have a question from Brian Brisky uh, to you. Uh, so let's. Uh, let's Brian seems to be a very curious person. I hey, if you it. guys, if you guys want me to share some picture, maybe I can even pull a picture of Elena on my screen. No. Uh, so just... okay, let's let's go back to crowdfunding. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so so Elena, this question's for you from Brian. Uh, Elena, so. Uh, you can dial this down to a launch ready status given a known audience size and a target financial goal uh, please explain so in other words in other words I, I believe he's he's saying 
you're able, based on this methodology, to determine when a project is ready for launch. Is that correct? That's our goal, yes. So, in the no, no, Excuse me, hang on, hang on. I, I will interrupt. That's not our goal. I'm always, I, I've been preaching this for a very long time. I think it's sinful to launch before you know you're ready. There, there's ways, there are ways to do this, and you're actually not giving your backers, you're not doing your due diligence if you're, if you're, if you're guessing, right? right. Yep. So, so and you know, I feel very strongly about this point. Sorry, sorry about that, Albin. It's it's Elena's it's Elena's turn. I just muted Albin. Thank you, Manolis. That was the deal we made. So, Brian, answering your question, this methodology helps you to understand your level of readiness. And if you follow step by step, you you know when you are ready. And uh, by saying that this is our goal, I meant that we still can control well campaigners actually launch. So we provide them with methodology and with step by step kind of instructions and we tell we can tell them pretty accurately when they are ready. But we can't stop them from launching before they are ready. So if absolutely. you're with us, you should be fine. Absolutely, and, and Albin, you're going to have to unmute yourself if you want to talk. But let me uh, let me just make sure for a second. So, Elena, you you raised a good point because there's only so much that you, Albin, or a campaign manager, or anyone who's helping someone in their crowdfunding campaign, because ultimately, the 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 responsibility always lands on the campaign and project creator. They're the ones making the the, the decisions to do things or not do things to launch or not to launch. So if someone decides to not, you know, not follow someone's advice, ultimately that's their decision, but at least they've done uh, enough work with the knowledge and know-how of how others have prior have previously succeeded to give them a better chance even if the methodology per se says you should wait a little bit. Is is that how is that what you meant by ultimately it's up to the creator? Absolutely, yes. But you know, to again raise another point, we are here and podcaster, we are numbers people. So if you launch before, we recommend you to launch and fail. For us, it's another good data point. So <laughs> if you add, want to add to this statistic, you're welcome to do that. But and even, <laughs> you know, even in a platform, we account for this uh, to still kind of protect ourselves, to kind of have a green light when you should, when you shouldn't. So to Elena's point, uh, it's a good data point for us, but Elena, that's a very mean way to position that. I just want you to know between I, the number of people. You want to be honest and transparent. That true. What number is it about? You, you know, uh, Elena, for for how for how sweet you are, that was really mean. You know? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I uh, hurt your audience. Didn't mean that, but we are all adults here, right? It's a mean. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Um, all right, so uh, let me just see if I had any particular questions because I was writing down some notes as you went through the syllabus. And Alvin, um, I, I really, I really must say it's a very thorough job uh, that that you got that you and Elena have done. Um, the the syllabus is very comprehensive from pre-launch to during launch to post-launch. Um, in your estimation. What is the what is the number one, um, and I know it's hard to tell because every campaign is different. But most more often than not, what is the biggest struggle you see uh, for those people who are crowdfunding, whether they're having success or failure? What is what is the biggest struggle that is a is a common uh, sticking point for people? I really think it's it's activating their network. Right, because they wait for way too long to to engage their network. So I, I I've heard this in, in entrepreneurship circles, and I've adopted it for for crowdfunding. And actually, I think uh, uh, Stephen has quoted me on that. Uh, I think that ask for money. Your your first ask should never be for money because that, that's a very hard ask, right? And the way that I heard it, the way it was positioned to me is, 
if you want advice, ask for money. And if you want money, ask for advice, right? So I think people are struggling because I see it way too often. The first communication with their network is, hey, I've done this. Give me money. Share it with everybody, right? And that's a very easy ask to dismiss, right? I don't know what you're doing. I have no idea what you did. I don't know what it's all about. I don't have time for this. Right, but if you approach with, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I think of doing. Does this make sense to you? What makes sense or what doesn't make sense? How how do you see this? Right. So I, I've just spent maybe 20 minutes talking to you about this. Can you can you tell me what did you get out of all of this? Right. Is, is this have, have any? Do you have any interest in this? So so engaging your network that way also kind of shows shows how excited you are about your project. Right? You cannot be incognito about something that you're so dedicated to. You, you kind of have to let that radiate and you have to you have to put it out in the world and see what comes back. Because if there are any issues with it, and you have to be open to, to, to feedback. Because if there are any issues there, you need to know. And you don't even need to need to really justify to everybody how you're going to take care of that, but you need to be aware of those issues. Because if it fails, ultimately, it's your problem, not anyone else's problem. And, and I'm just assuming that you care about it being successful more than anybody else. Right? Absolutely. So, so talking to people, and that, that's really the customer discovery. I mean, that, that's by definition customer discovery. So, so you just kind of have to line up your, your activities where... where they give back on multiple levels, if that makes sense, right? It, it does make a lot of sense, Alvin. I, I think I think you're right. A lot of people, they they almost don't want to tell the people that they know that, that they're doing this, and, and they feel as if just the people they don't know who are followers on social media will take them the rest of the way. Uh, unfortunately, that's that's not how it works. It's, it's, really, it's really engaging people in the real world and then tr taking them along the journey in the digital world so that the message gets amplified. Um, but same question for Elena. Elena, in your estimation, what is what is one of the, the, the sticking points, uh, the struggles that crowdfunders face uh, that, that you've seen in the, uh, in the analysis that you've done? Sure, I I'll, will I'll answer this question, but also, Manolis, if you don't mind, I will ask myself another question, as if you ask me, and I will answer that question as well, in case sure. you never do. Sure, no problem. So, to me, again, I haven't been in the crowdfunding industry as long as Alvin has, but my understanding is that patience is actually something on psychological level that makes people start earlier than they should kind of you know they have this great idea and they can't believe that other people don't see the value and for them it's a matter of just uploading a campaign page on Kickstarter and immediately everybody should know how cool the idea is and this is a fundamental mindset of all idea people I've met in my life. So patience, my friends, is, um, a, virtue. is a big deal in this. And now, Manolis, another question. Yes. I am asking on your behalf. Yes, please. Yes. If you ask me what kind of one of major benefit or why should I take this course or, or maybe any other course or, or this course for sure because I've heard it from people who have worked with Albin on his methodology. And what this course does is it gives people confidence, give, gives people, co campaigners, confidence to do what they want to do. Now they don't play anymore a Russian roulette, right? They, they know step by step the process. They can envision the success and they move to it with confidence. And that I think is one of major things you can get from the course. I, you know what, I must say um, that is a great sales pitch for your program. It's basically intellectual confidence for crowdfunding. You know, I, I kind of like that. Um, so very, very profound, Elena, and I'm sorry that I didn't think of asking you that question. <laughs> yeah, I kind of suspect it, so <laughs> I, 
You have to be proactive, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, we have about four minutes left. I'm just going to look through, see if there's any other comments. Uh, some of these are, oh, yes, okay. I got a good one from Frank, um, and all the questions are good. Uh, so, Frank, thank you for this question. Um, what are your feelings on the 30% rule? Being that most campaigns seem to succeed if they start out with or hit 30% fairly quickly. Uh, Albin, um, I believe you might have told me about the 30% rule, so I'll, I'll let you answer this question. So here's and, how I like it. Here's how I, like it. I, I I love to leverage it. Well, let's put it that way. And and also, and, I'm sorry to interrupt, but can you please tell us what the 30% rule is for? So, people who so don't basically, 90% of campaigns which reach 30% of their goal within first five, and I always say I love to do it in two days, uh, they meet or exceed their goal. So if you want to get scientific about this, right? Uh, understanding how to represent your goal. Uh, together with the with the thirty percent rule gives you two points in a plane, right? And it, yeah, I know Elena's looking at me all crazy, but um, it's really a a great first milestone you can use to to benchmark against, right? Because we know that the success rate in crowdfunding is around thirty percent. So if within first two two to let's say five days, you can get up to ninety percent. That's a great that's a great milestone to, to benchmark against. It's it's uh, and it's much easier to benchmark against than it is the full goal, right? Um, most of the work most of the work I do with people again is trying to hit that thirty percent within the first two days. But really understanding how to break it down and how to calculate that, I, I like to again look at it in terms of not money, but in terms of how many backers are you going to need to hit that and what convert at what conversion rate. So how much traffic are you going to need to drive to your, to your campaign page and at what conversion rate to hit that? Because it really comes down to, to again, numbers and, and, and understanding conversions, and, and, but planning it in terms of traffic, right? Absolutely. And, so. Absolutely. Okay, that that makes sense. And um, I'm just going to read a few more comments because these are nice uh, nice comments. Uh, so uh, Brian says uh, in response to your answer, Elena, he says, "Thank you, Elena. Your explanation was so helpful. I'm looking forward to collaborating with you as you develop your methodology." That was a nice little uh, little comment. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it. Yep. And then uh, of course, Brian also says, "And thank you, Albin, for your passion." <laughs> So, good good comments, you know, uh, and uh, and then Brian uh, also mentioned uh, he'd like to speak with you about benchmarks, milestones, and minimum KPIs. Uh, so it would be good for for the both of you to connect with Brian after the fact. Brian is from Austin. He is a he is in the campaign management industry, uh, and I've spoken to him before. He's a great guy. So I think you guys should definitely connect after the fact. We'll definitely connect, but Brian also, uh, on April 23rd, we're launching this class. We'll be talking all about it <laughs> in, in depth and in detail. I just want to let you know. <laughs> that means, Brian, that was, your, that was a call to action. You will sign up for his class. <laughs> so uh, There you go. So there we go. Well, uh, thank you, everyone. We are out of time, right on time. Uh, this has been another episode of Reality Crowd TV Crowdfunding Hangouts, and uh, Albin and Elena, uh, any parting words uh, for the audience? And we'll uh, we'll go Elena first. Thanks for being with us. Unfortunately, I could not see anybody, so that is a technology is a little bit behind here. But I did enjoy talking about crowdfunding and about Funcaster and about our class we start next week. So Excellent. Thank you for having us here. Whenever. Excellent. And actually, I just remembered something that I actually did remember to ask you. Isn't there some sort of code you wanted to share? What do you mean? Was there a code, a disk? A, some sort oh, of? yes, Elena had that. Yes, sure. Yeah, Elena, did, didn't you say you wanted to share a discount code? <laughs> Yes, we're thinking about some secret code for your audience who have and now who spend the whole hour with us. Uh, this is a discount code to register for our class for those who are interested. 
So please follow up, and uh, the code will be will be shared with them. How we will do that? How about this? It's going to be a reality crowd fund TV. How about how about reality crowd TV? Not yeah, crowd that's what I said. That's what <laughs> I said. I don't know what you heard. You you said crowd fund. No, I didn't. You misheard me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, guys, don't confuse your audience. Just yeah. Okay. So that, that sounds good. The code will be reality crowd TV. Um, now, Albin, what any last words you'd like to say for the audience? Um, thank you all for for um, watching us. Uh, I I have uh, been labeled as somebody who loves to talk a lot, and especially when it comes to crowdfunding. So I always appreciate when people listen to me. Apparently, um, <laughs> no. But seriously, th thank you all, and I really hope to to uh, see you in class, and I really hope to work with you all. Uh, this is something that I find very exciting, uh, and I am extremely passionate about all of this. So, in, in general, I would say that in my life, I've always been passionate about enabling other people. And, you know, for right now, what a better way to do that than to really figure out crowdfunding. So, I, I hope you reach out, and I hope we get an opportunity to work together. Wonderful. Well, uh, it's also been a pleasure for us here at Reality Crowd TV to have the both of you. Um, you, you guys are, are very you know, intelligent, very nice, and uh, and I met you both in person, so I, I, I truly consider you both both my friends. Uh, so thanks again for joining us. And uh, and everyone, thank you as the audience for joining us as well. Uh, without you, our show would not go on. So thank you very much for joining us. And until next time, dream it, believe it, achieve it. Achieve it. Have a good night. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.